The video you have all been waiting for, how I edit and film my YouTube videos. Today I'm going to be showing you the magic of how I edit and record and film and everything about my YouTube videos. I'm gonna try to keep this as short and sweet as possible just because I overcomplicate everything, but I am gonna be breaking down how I film my videos, how I plan them, them, how I edit them, how the importance of introductions, the importance of outros. Today I'm going to be primarily focusing on iMovie on my laptop. If you're not new here, you may know that I used to film and edit everything on my phone. And that is definitely a video that I want to make in the near future. So you should totally subscribe if you want to see how I filmed and edited everything on my phone. It was a struggle, but I have officially updated my equipment. But today I'm going to be telling you guys how I edit on my computer using the software iMovie. I have not upgraded to Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro just yet just because it's kind of expensive But this is a good video for beginners who are wanting to just not spend a lot of money right now So let's go ahead and dive into how I film my videos So the first step when it comes to filming my videos is planning the actual video The first thing that I like to do is obviously schedule them out I post every Thursday and Sunday and I basically create a list of videos that I want to film and break them down as to when I'll I'll post them when I'll be able to film them. If you want to get more specific, you can literally schedule out your week and write down when you're going to film the vlog. Make sure the time frame kind of makes sense. So if it's summertime, you don't want to film a winter clothing haul or anything like that. You want to film videos that fit the season that you're in. So plan your videos according to what is trending for the season that you're in. The next step in planning my video is planning the actual video, but very loosely. You don't want to plan a video that you are trying to like follow your guide the whole time, but I like to just write out a few things that I want to do in the vlog and then kind of just film the whole experience so you definitely want to have some sort of plan because if you get in the car and try to start vlogging you might be like okay what do I do now where do I go so you want to have some sort of guide for your video that way your vlog flows a little bit better and it all just kind of makes sense the next part in filming my videos is my actual equipment you don't need the best of the best in order to produce a great video oftentimes you can have the best equipment but suck at editing and your video literally sucks but you can also have the worst equipment be great at editing and your videos are bomb. So it all really comes down to editing, but I still wanna tell you guys about the equipment that I have. So right now I am filming on my Sony ZV-1. I love this camera. I'm planning on doing a review on this camera in comparison to the common vlog camera, which is the Canon G7X Mark II. That is one of the most popular vlog cameras, but people are asleep on Sony because this ZV-1, like I'm obsessed with it. The Sony ZV-1 also comes with a Bluetooth tripod. The next thing, of course is the batteries, the SD cards, SD card adapter, depending on the laptop that you have. I use a ring light, of course my laptop, and the software that I use is iMovie. The very last step in the filming process is the filming. My number one thing is to be comfortable with vlogging alone. When you start vlogging with a group of people, you become comfortable because you're kind of more talking to them than you are your audience. But you need to become comfortable with just talking to the camera as if a person is here. Maintain that eye contact with the lens, don't look at yourself in the lens viewfinder thing because then you're gonna be like, see how awkward it is? I'm like not looking at you, I'm looking at the viewfinder. So make sure you look at the lens itself. And then if it helps, you can actually move the viewfinder out of your eye view. That way you know that you're not looking at it. My next tip in filming is to have pretty to look at locations. My location right now is just my living room, but I cleaned it, it is a fresh space. You don't really wanna film with like a mess in the background. It doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel very easy to look at. People watch videos to kind of just relax and I don't like watching a video with like a messy background like it kind of stresses me out you can have a plain wall you can have a backdrop whatever works for you lighting is everything my pro tip is filming in front of a window I'm filming in front of three windows right now and I still have my ring light so make sure you are filming in front of good lighting whether it's a window ring light whatever it may be it'll keep that viewer in it will make you look glowing and it'll make color grading a lot easier and yeah that is everything I do to film now let's get into everything that that I do to edit. So I'm gonna break down editing into like different steps that I do when it comes to editing. So the first step that you're going to do is importing your footage. The first thing that you're gonna do obviously is go into iMovie, open it up, and it's gonna open up to a page like this. Obviously you may not have many projects in there. You're gonna hit create new, and then you're gonna hit movie. Then you'll come up to this page, which I'll break down what all of these little icons stand for, the ones that you'll be utilizing the most. But for now we're focusing on 
importing the footage. So first you're going to hit file and import media. One thing that you'll see is these little shortcuts on the side, which I use very often, if not all the time. So this little icon stands for command on your laptop and then the letter I. So if you don't feel like going up here and constantly having to click the actual action, you can use those shortcuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the shortcut command I, and this is where you'll import your media. The way you import media is obviously different. If you're importing it straight from your SD card, your SD card will be present on that devices section, which is right here. You'll see your SD card right below it. Obviously mine is not there because I don't have an SD card plugged in. One thing that I do very often is if I have a lot of clips on my phone, I will airdrop them to my computer, which is the easiest way to get the footage onto your computer without having to connect anything. Once you airdrop yourself the clips, they will be found in your downloads. And these are all the clips from a video that I did recently, which you should totally go watch if you haven't seen it. But these are the clips from that video and you can import whichever one you're looking for. If you wanna just import one, you just do that one and hit import selected. And then if you wanna import multiple, you hit shift and click all the way to the part where you want to import the media. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click all of these random clips and hit import selected. And now they are found in your project media section. This is where you can kind of watch the clip over without it actually being in your timeline but if you want to import this media which you're obviously going to into your timeline you drag it straight down or you can hit the plus button at the bottom if you ever do something that you didn't mean to and you want to undo the action you can hit command Z and it'll just undo what you had just done the next thing that we're gonna break down is basically your rough draft of the video that you're creating so once I have all the footage that I want in my project media you can go ahead and add all the clips in the order that you want so let's say I just want to add all of these in the order that I have it right now now this little toggle right here kind of just stretches out the timeline so you can see the clip in a wider view. Now when it comes to cuts, basically you're just going to click the actual clip and I do Command B and it splits that clip. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this just because it looks like I'm not talking in it and it just eliminates that awkward space. Anytime you have a pause or an awkward space, I like to just delete it. And a way to speed edit that kind of editing is to look on the audio file and you see where there's no talking at all. I just go ahead and do command B, delete. And that's sometimes how I speed edit. Instead of just watching it and then deleting, I just look at the audio part at the bottom, which is found on the blue, and just delete all the parts where it looks like there's absolutely no talking. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to zoom into a clip and then how to slowly zoom into a clip. You're gonna go up here to this crop section, which is the third icon. And the first way to just do a jump cut or a jump zoom is to do crop to fill, which basically you're just cropping it to fill the screen make sure it is always centered hit enter and it basically just zooms into that one part I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and do the same thing but this time it's gonna be a slow zoom which is called Ken Burns click it here and this is where the Ken Burn is gonna start and this is where it's going to end and it's gonna look like this now you can also do it opposite. So if you wanna start it zoomed in and then zooming out, you can do that as well. The next thing we're gonna to touch on is music and sound effects. Now this is something that can ultimately transform your entire video. I love using music in my videos. A lot of questions that I got was, how do I find music? How do I not get that copyright and still kind of use music that is kind of popular? So the first thing I'm gonna tell you about is the two subscriptions that I have where you can download songs that will not give you a copyright claim or a copyright strike. I use Epidemic Sound and Thematic. These are subscriptions that you do have to pay for. One of them is 15 and then one of them I use for free right now. I just use the regular schmegular subscription but they do have one that you can pay for and get way more songs. But I just stick to the regular for Thematic and then I pay 15 a month for Epidemic Sounds. Another way to find music is you can YouTube royalty free songs and then download the video through the YouTube to MP3 website. This is also another way that I do sound effects. Let's just say I wanna find the sound effect of a mouse click and it'll be the quickest video, which is perfect. So you would copy and paste this URL and paste it into the YouTube MP3 and then you have that sound effect in your library whenever you need it. Another way to get sound effects is you go into audio and then this little section called sound effects. There are a lot of popular ones in here. You always wanna make sure that you don't see these yellow marks, 
right here because that means it's going to basically destroy the viewer's ears. And then if I have it behind a clip where I'm talking, I make sure that the sound is around like 4%. I make it really low because you want it to be a subtle audio in the background and not something that's excruciatingly distracting. Another thing when it comes to audio that I use a lot is audio filters. So that's when the video will kind of sound like it's being washed out. So if you ever want to do a clip where you want the audio to sound muffled or sound like kind of underwater or something, you can go to your audio effects and you can do muffled or telephone. Another thing I like to do is when the audio Audio is coming to an end I always do a fade out it's very subtle but it makes a huge difference if you have an audio clip that kind of just cuts off it's super awkward another way that I like to utilize sound effects is putting it over a transition so say I wanted to add a transition here how you do that is literally on this icon transitions the one that I use a lot is circle open and then I also use slide left so you're gonna drag that transition in there and you can actually change the speed of the transition. So right now it's automatically going to a second long and I'm gonna play what that looks like. But I normally like to make it a little bit quicker. So how you do that is you double click the actual transition and my go-to time is 0 0.3 seconds, hit enter and it's a super quick transition. So when it comes to adding a sound effect to that transition, I like to use the audio golf hit. And there are so many different audios you can use. You could use like a swoosh, you could use a mouse click, but I use golf hits when it comes to these little transitions. Remember to turn down that audio just a little bit. That way it's subtle, but still makes a difference. And this is what it looks like once I do that. So I love doing transitions like that just because it's really nice to look at. And another one that I use obviously is circle close or circle open. It really doesn't matter. They honestly look the same to me. I do the same 0 0.3 seconds and it just closes that scene out. So now we're going to be talking about graphics, overlays, fonts, all of that stuff. Now when it comes to fonts, I don't actually use the fonts or the titles that they give you. Within iMovie, I just feel like they're a little bit, not crusty, but just not my favorite. You can honestly use any app that you want to create your overlays. The main trick to creating your overlay is to use the green screen. So literally what you're gonna do is you can go into Safari and search green screen and you can go into images and basically just select any picture that you want and take a screenshot of that, crop it in to where it's literally just green. And that's when you'll go into any app really that you want to use when it comes to using fonts and you'll put that font over that green screen. What you're going to do is drag it on top of the clip. Now iMovie is going to think you're trying to cut away to that clip. What you're going to want to do is go into this picture in picture icon. Instead of doing cut away, you're going to do green slash blue screen and literally there's your text. The next feature that I like to use a lot is picture in picture, which I use that for when I was talking about directions, I had that pop onto the screen. So how you do that is you drag the photo into the timeline on top of the clip that you want it to be on. Now it's gonna automatically cut away again and it's gonna have a pin burn on there. It's kind of awkward. So instead of going in and resetting everything, you can literally just hit reset all on that clip and it'll just go to a normal cutaway with no zooming. So now you're gonna go in this cutaway section and do picture in picture, and then drag it out to how big you want it to look, and it'll just pop into the screen like this. If you can see these gray spots, that's basically the iMovie making the photo fade out, which I personally don't like. So you can drag the tiny little icon right here and let it go to just a regular pop in and then hit command B to split it, delete it, and it just pops right out. I like to use sound effects when it comes to pop-ins, so I'm gonna go into audio, sound effects, and I use the bottle cork sometimes, or you can use a mouse click, which iMovie does not have mouse click, so you will have to download that from YouTube. Make sure the audio is snapped with the actual clip itself, that way it's played on time, and this is what it'll end up looking like. And then if your music is a little loud or your audio is a little loud, obviously you can adjust it. That way you can hear the sound effect a little bit more. So we're gonna go to the plant nursery and... 
And that is how I add pictures, graphics, or anything like that on top of my YouTube videos. The very last thing that I cannot stress is the most important part of your video is your introduction. Let's go ahead and scroll all the way to the beginning of my video. The intro is where you're going to draw in your viewer, get them excited for the video, but you really wanna maintain that watch time. And the way you can do that is having a bomb intro to the point where they don't wanna exit out because they wanna see what's in the rest of the vlog. There are a lot of different ways you could do an intro. What I like to do is a coming up in today's vlog type of intro and choosing the most energetic parts of the vlog. The highlights of all the video, it definitely draws the viewer in, gets them excited, knows what they're about to see, what kind of vibe the video is gonna carry. The intro is the most important. Part. It is the most important part. So much so that YouTube actually has a separate analytics section where it shows you the amount of viewers that left after 30 seconds. Like that's how important the intro is. And then of course your outro, which honestly isn't super important because most of the time, a lot of new people watching your video don't make it to the end, but it's still good to have an outro just so it shows that you care from literally the second it starts, from the second it ends. And it also gives you a page to put any sort of YouTube overlay, which you do in YouTube studio. So the way I created my outro is, in, is a website called Canva. Canva.com you can create thumbnails, you can create YouTube art, YouTube outro. You click YouTube outro, it'll have the measurements corrected for you and you can just choose any of these random ones that you like. It's already a video for you. Like this is super cute. So say I click this. It'll look like that. Some of these you do have to pay for, but they have plenty of free ones that I use. This one's super cute. It's literally created for you and you can just go in there and add your own picture. You can change the title, anything that you wanna do. I actually might use this, this is super cute. Oh my gosh. And that is how I edit my YouTube videos. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope it was super informative. There is a lot more that I do, but it is so much to explain. I feel like I'd have to do like three other videos on color grading, graphics, all that stuff. But if that is something you would like, comment below. I will be more than happy to do it for you guys. But other than that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you feel better going into editing editing and if you're starting a YouTube channel you should totally comment below let us know we'll support you we're so excited make sure you subscribe because the next video that I plan on doing about editing will be how to film and edit using just your phone so many tips that I'm going to be giving you guys and you really don't want to miss that but I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know you're tired of me talking and I will see you in the next vlog bye